Hi, it's Toby's Grandma with Grandma's Toys, and I have a project to show you today that is so fun, so beautiful, and so easy you can do it yourself with just a few materials. Would you like to turn a plain clear glass plate into a beautiful plate like this? Or would you like to turn a plain glass plate into a beautiful plate like this? I'll show you how. Here's what you need. A plain glass plate. I got some of these plates at Goodwill. They're about a dollar a piece. But you can go to the dollar store and get them for a dollar a piece there too. They're pretty easy to find. You also need a piece of tissue. The kind of tissue that you use in a gift bag. This is the kind of tissue I use to make the floral plates. I picked out this tissue for this project because it reminds me of Easter. It's pink and it's polka dot and I think it would be so nice on the Easter table. The third thing is my all-time favorite craft supply, Mod Podge. I think you could use white glue, but if you have the opportunity to go to the craft store and get a bottle of Mod Podge, you can use it for so many things, plus a little sponge brush to spread the Mod Podge on your plate. Okay, I'm ready to start. First thing I did was wash this plate after I brought it home from the store. Sometimes glass comes with a, a little bit of a film on it when you buy it, and you want to make sure that especially the bottom is completely clean before you attempt your project. I also cut out a piece of my tissue that is just big enough to cover my plate with a little bit of overhang all the way around. I'm ready to glue my plate. I'm going to cover the bottom of my glass plate with Mod Podge, making sure that there aren't any spots left unpainted, unglued, I want to make sure the rim has Mod Podge all the way around. Like my other projects, I want to make sure there are no big globs of Mod Podge. That is just painted on very smoothly and consistently around the plate. Okay. I'll take the tissue and put the brightest side down, because that's the side I want to show through my plate. I centered it in the middle. It's fragile. Tissue paper is delicate. So first of all, I'll press it onto the glue on the center of the plate, bottom of the plate, and then I'm going to touch it around this rim. I don't want any gaps when I'm done, where the tissue doesn't touch the glue. Now that it's touched all the way around the rim, I'll work my way around the plate, pushing the tissue down onto the glue carefully, trying to keep it as smooth as I possibly can. There, Because the plate is curved, there are going to be creases in the, in the tissue, but you want to keep those to a minimum. All the way around the glue, making sure the tissue is touching the rim all the way around. Isn't that pretty? It's pretty already and it's not even done. I'm going to set this plate aside for a couple of hours to dry. If I was doing this project in the evening, I think I'd let it dry overnight. I'm going to set it upside down on this glass to dry. Here's a plate that I glued earlier. It's completely dry. So I will cut away any paper that isn't glued down. Just going along the edge of the plate. Just cutting around the edge of the plate a little bit at a time. Almost done. 
here. Now that the paper is cut away from the edges, I'm going to put one more layer of Mod Podge on the bottom of the plate to seal the paper. Be sure to cover the whole plate. Because of these creases in the paper, it's a little trickier to get all of the paper glued. This is why it's important to let the plate dry completely when you put the first layer on. So you're putting the second layer on top of a completely dried layer of Mod Podge. Set this aside again for a couple of hours or overnight to dry. Don't use your new plate for hot or messy foods. Don't use it as a dinner plate. But use it as a serving plate for appetizers or treats or snacks or desserts, dry foods. And when you're done, clean it with a little soapy water and dry it completely. Don't put it in the dishwasher. The Mod Podge will act just like Elmer's glue and all your work will come off. If you are very unhappy with the way your plate turned out, Soak it in a little pan of hot water, clean it off, wash it again, and start again with a new piece of tissue. Here's some ways you can use your plate. If you collect plates and have a plate stand, you can display it. You can fill up your plate with cookies or brownies, serve them to your family or friends, or take them as a gift to someone else, and they can keep the plate. And put your plate on your nightstand or your dresser, a place to keep your jewelry or change. I did some matching plates with the spring pink polka dot tissue, two small and one large, and I am so happy with the way they turned out. I think they'll look very pretty on my Easter table. So whatever size or style you decide to make, I hope you have fun making your own personalized plates. Thanks for watching Grandma's Toys. Are those cute bags? They're made out of bandanas. Hi, it's Toby's Grandma with Grandma's Toys, and I've got another fun and super, super easy do-it-yourself project that you can do at home. It's a bandana bag. A bag or a purse made out of two bandanas. All you need for this project are two bandanas and a pair of fabric scissors. You may have bandanas at home that you want to make your bag out of. You can choose two bandanas that are identical and have the bag be the same on both sides or you can choose contrasting bandanas. I picked these bandanas up at the craft store. Each bandana is a little bit different. We're going to cut one inch off the border of the bandana to make the handle, and then the center will be our bag. I like this color because it reminds me of Frozen. And I'm going to use a contrasting color of purple for this bag. I'm especially fond of denim and black together. So I'm going to make a bag with denim on one side and black on the other, and the fringe, of course, will be mixed. First of all, I'm going to cut an inch from the edge of the first bandana. I'm going to leave one edge uncut, because that's going to be the top of my bag. On this bandana, one inch is about halfway between the edge and the design, so I am just eyeballing it. Going to the edge of my second bandana, my contrasting color, and I'm going to save these pieces that I cut off for making the strap. These bandanas are actually quite large, so rather than cut off an inch, I'm going to cut all the way to the beginning of the design. I marked the edge that I don't want to cut. You can use a pin or a paper clip, but cut 
the remaining three edges. I've got around three edges. I'm putting my two bandanas together, wrong sides together, so that the bright shiny side is on the outside and I'm lining up the uncut edges here together along the top. Now around all the edges I'm going to make some cuts about a half an inch apart and about two inches into the bandana. I'll start out using the ruler but after I've done a few I'll just eyeball it. like this, through both layers, all the way around. I'm almost all the way around. As you can see, the corners were completely clipped off, clipping this way and then clipping this way. I think for this bandana, I'm going to cut some trim for the top, too. So, I'm going to trim up to the design, about half inch apart. There's that corner, and this one. Now I'm going to go all the way around three edges, the two sides and the bottom, tying the strip on the black to the strip on the blue. Or to a square knot. I won't pull it through the first time real tight, but I'll pull it pretty tight on the second. part of the knot pretty tight. I'm going to tie these together all the way around. I'm almost all the way around. It does take some time to go all the way around, so be patient. I've left the top three untied. Here's the loose ones across the top of the bag, and I'm going to leave the top three on this side untied. I did want to add fringe to the top of this black one and give it a little bit of a western look. So I used the iron and I pressed down that fringed edge about three inches on the front and the back. Now take the trim that you cut off from around the bandanas you should have two long pieces. Fold them in half, cut them in half, and then use three of them to make a braid for your handle. I will tie my three strips to my three untied strips on my bandana purse. I have tied one strip to each of the three sets of, of strips that I left untied. Now I'm going to take those three strips and braid them. And when I get to the end, I will tie the three ends to the three untied strips on the top of the bag, just like I did the other side. And here's my finished bandana bag. I've got my projects inside. And here's the finished blue and purple one, the frozen color. I cut the strips on this bag three inches into the bandana. This bag was two inches, just to show you the difference. 
This one doesn't have it clipped along the top. It's just folded back. I like the long tassels though on the one with the three inches. This is going to be a gift bag. I'm putting a birthday present inside and taking it to a party. This one will be added to my tote collection. Well, that's how easy and fun it is to make your own bandana bag. Two bandanas and a pair of scissors. I hope you have fun making your own bag. And thanks. Thanks for watching Grandma's Toys.